Today is the last time that the Bible refers to masturbation. This time, let's take a look at the Bible passage that is misunderstood as pointing out the sin of masturbating in the Bible following the last time. First, it's 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Evil desire. Here is the same word used in Matthew chapter 5 verse 28 and Romans chapter 6 verse 12. In this context, it is unclear whether this word has a sexual meaning. There is no positive answer to this question. This is because, as in Matthew chapter 5 verse 28, the word, evil desire, does not imply a negative or sexual meaning in itself, but is largely determined by the post-war context. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 contrasts the word, evil desire, with righteousness, faith, love, and peace. Thus, the evil desire referred to here can be interpreted as injustice, distrust, hatred, quarrel, etc. Due to ambition, impatience, and argument, Timothy, the recipient of the letter, was still young in his mid-thirties, so, evil desire, could grow. Suppose someone claims to be able to put sexual greed into, young man's lust. The argument that masturbation should be included within sexual greed would be difficult to make even if the claim is accepted. Accordingly, the passage, evil desire, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 cannot prove the guilt of loud acts, regardless of their sexual nature. So far, passages defining sin, listing sins, or supporting Bible passages have not been found to be significant persuaders in incriminating masturbation. As an attempt to critically examine such a theory, I will examine the Bible verse that is mentioned in support of the opposite position, which suggests the permission for masturbation. I would like to repeat Leviticus chapter 15 verses 16 to 17, which has already been introduced. When a man has an emission of semen, he must bathe his whole body with water, and he will be unclean till evening. Any clothing or leather that has semen on it must be washed with water, and it will be unclean till evening. As we have seen, the Bible is the ultimate standard for determining whether masturbation is sinful. Therefore, I first looked for a passage that suggested justice in the form of sin and examined whether masturbation was justified. After that, we examined the list of sins in the Bible in general to see if masturbation was one of them. After that, I examined each phrase that was mentioned when pointing out the sin of masturbation one by one. After reading these three works, we conclude that there is no evidence of masturbation being a sin. It has even been argued that the Bible permits masturbation. This is also a very weak position, in my opinion. There is no direct evidence in the Bible that masturbation is sinful or actively permitted. The question, is masturbation a sin, has been examined from a number of angles so far. Masturbation is usually considered a crime by those who believe it is, based on their own guilt, expert opinion, and Bible evidence, proving that being guilty of masturbation does not necessarily mean we are guilty of the act itself. In spite of analyzing the various points of view of experts in various positions, the claim that masturbation is a sin did not appear credible. It is important to note that even the Bible, the ultimate authority on faith and behavior, does not clearly define masturbation as a sin. In spite of the fact that loud voices cannot be classified as sin, several complex issues make it difficult to evaluate Christians ethically. The next video will be followed by a persistent search for what the hell is wrong with masturbation?